بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم All praise is due to Allah the Lord of the world the most beneficent the most merciful the master of the day of resurrection May Allah have his salah and salam and blessings upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the believers of his family and the noble companions and upon those who follow on their path until the day of resurrection we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from them extraordinary consideration has been given by the Islamic law to women's affairs all meant to protect her chastity to honor her and to secure her correct position in life the so called quote restrictions in of quote placed upon her regarding her dress and the display of her beauty and ornament is only to guard against all ways of corruption arising from such dazzling displays so Islam has established therefore something good and not a restriction on the freedom of women but it is a fair protection for her lest her fall down to the lowest levels of humility and this means of protection one of the great means is the hijab the characteristics of the hijab and the glad tidings promised by Allah to the woman adhering it and the danger of dazzling displays of ornaments and beauty as well as the terrible repercussions in this life and the hereafter for those who practice what is called tabarruj in Islam display of beauty this is what will be discussed that will be discussed and it comes at a time when more women are throwing away their revealing clothes and wearing the hijab. This comes at a time when women wearing hijab are being attacked in quote civilized places of the world. And when France could not even tolerate the wearing of what they call head scarf which Muslims refer to wrongly as hijab these are times of trials for Muslims and particularly for Muslim women we have also remembered the path of the prophets endurance, patience holding on and aiming high by keeping the way of Allah above everything part one the virtues of hijab part one the virtues of hijab first hijab is an act of obedience hijab is an act of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Allah states in the Quran in Surah Al-Ahzab in 33-36 وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا It is not for a believer man or woman when Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter that they should have an, op- an option in their decision and whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed strayed in a plain error and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah An-Nisa in 4.65 فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ 
حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلم تسليما But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a judge in all disputes between them, and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions, and accept them with full submission. Indeed, Allah ordered that woman must put on the hijab. So it is not something cultural, it is Allah's order. It is Allah's order, its conditions are not Arabian, Egyptian, Pakistani, black or white Americans. Its conditions are specified in the Quran and Sunnah to provide a protection and safeguarding of women. No one knows about what is good for men and women more than their creator Allah. His laws are all wise as it is the case with all of his actions. So Allah commanded this in Surah An-Nur 24, 31. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَلِيَضَرِبْنَ بِخُمُرِهِنَّ عَلَى جِيُوبِهِنَّ And tell the believing woman to lower their gaze from looking at forbidden things and protect their private parts from illegal sexual acts and not to show off their adornment except what must ordinarily appear thereof that they should draw their veils over their jalabibihin jalabibihin the meaning of jalabibihin the respect to the scholars from the righteous predecessors different whether the veil cover of the body must include the hands and face or not many of the scholars are with the opinion that the hands and the face must be covered other respected scholars say it is preferable for women to cover their whole bodies Jalabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered the dazzling display of beauty as an act of ignorance. As he stated in Surah Al-Ahzab 33-33 وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنْ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى And stay in your houses. And don't display yourselves like that of the times of jahiliyyah, of ignorance, the days of ignorance prior to the revelation of the Quran. And he, he subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the same surah, 33, 53, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُنَّ مَتَاعًا فَاسْأَلُوهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ ذَلِكُمْ أَطْهَرُ لِقُلُوبِكُمْ وَقُلُوبِهِنْ And when you ask the Prophet's wives for anything you want, ask them from behind a screen. This verse does not apply only to the Prophet's wives, but to all of the believing women. Carefully contemplate the following verse in 33, the same chapter, but verse 59. Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu, qul li azwajika وبناتك ونساء المؤمنين يدنين عليهن من جلابي بهن ذلك أدنى أن يعرفن فلا يؤذين O oh, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to draw their clocks, their veils all over their bodies when outdoors that is most convenient that they should be known and not molested no one ignore the molestation of women that exists in the so-called open society. Question is why it is happening? The answer begins to shape up when people think about the purpose behind creation. 
we are created for a single purpose of worshipping Allah alone the details of the ways to fulfill this is in Islam in it we can find how women and men can safeguard their dignity honor and morality the worship of Allah is manifested in following his code Allah orders that men and women must avoid the roads that lead to animalistic ways of living the hijab is one of Allah's codes it is an honor and protection for women as well as a true freedom for her body from the hands and eyes of aggressors and molesters the Prophet ﷺ said المرأة عورة the woman meaning any woman is عورة source of attraction and that is she must be covered second the hijab is iffa is modesty the hijab is iffa modesty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the adherence to the hijab a manifestation of chastity and modesty in the verse which we read earlier 33 59 يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ وَبَنَاتِكَ وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِبِهِمْ Listen ذَلِكَ أَدْنَ أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَ فَلَا يُؤْذِينَ That is most convenient that they should be known and not molested. In this verse there is evidence that the recognition that the recognition of the apparent beauty of the woman is harmful to her. And when the cause of attraction ends, the restriction is removed. And this is illustrated in the case of elderly women who may have lost every aspect of attraction. Allah made it permissible for them to lay aside their outer garments and expose their faces and hands, reminding, however, that it is still better for them to keep their modesty. And this is illustrated in Surah An-Nur 24-24. والقواعد من النساء اللاتي لا يرجون نكاحا فليس عليهن جناح أن يضعن ثيابهن غير متبرجات بزينة وأن يستعففن خير لهن والله سميع عليم And as for the woman past the child I'm sorry this is 2460 And as for the woman past the child bearing who don't expect what luck It is no sin for them if they discard their outer in such a way as not to show their adornment. But it is best to be modest and Allah knows and sees all things provided that they don't make a display of their beauty. But it is best to be modest and Allah knows and sees all things. So how about young woman? How about young women? Clearly they must stay modest and not display their beauty. If this is the case with the elderly, then by all means, for the young woman, it is more of a demand. Third, the hijab is tahara. The hijab is tahara. Purity. The hijab is tahara. Purity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had shown us the hikmah, the wisdom behind the legislation of the hijab. In Surah Al-Ahzab 33, 53 hijab, liqulubikum wa qulubihim. And when you ask them, the Prophet writes, for anything you want ask them from behind a screen that is here the point of evidence that is purer for your hearts and for their hearts so it makes for a greater purity of the hearts of the believing men and women because it screens against the desire of the heart 
without the hijab, the heart may or may not desire. And that's why the heart is more pure when the sight is blocked by the hijab. And thus the prevention of fitna, of evil actions, is very much manifested. It really cuts off the ill thoughts and the greed of the sick hearts. We read in Surah Al-Ahzab 33-32 فَلَا تَخْضَعْنَ بِالْقَوْلِ فَيَطْمَعَ الَّذِي فِي قَلْبِهِ مَرَضْ وَقُلْنَ قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا Be not soft in speech. Lest he in whose heart is a disease, this is the point of evidence, lest he in whose heart is a disease should be moved with desire, but speak in an honorable manner. Fourth, the hijab is a shield. The hijab is a shield. The Prophet ﷺ said, In Allah. حَيِّيٌّ سِتِّيرٌ يُحِبُّ السِّتْرِ Allah, the Most High, is حَيِّي حَيِّي What is حَلِي? Means bashful. Allah is حَيِّي Meaning bashful. He does not unravel the acts of disobedience by his slaves. They openly display or disobey Allah while they are in need of him. Yet he, being حَيِّي being bashful is ashamed of humiliating them, leaving the door of repentance open for them. If, however, they become arrogant and persist on the spread of evil and disobedience, Allah certainly will deal with them with justice and inflicting the just punishment on them. So this is the meaning of the, of the name al Hayy. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah the Most High is Hayy. Then he described him as Sittir. What does it mean, Sittir? Allah is Sittir. He provides means that shield against the uncovering of disobedient acts. The slaves commit acts of, obedience, of disobedience while Allah is providing them with many of His favors. He subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the opportunity for each one of us to return to Him in repentance and to seek His forgiveness. He loves those who don't like the spread of sin. He dislikes the Muslim who publicizes his acts of sin and disobedience. He loves the Muslim who does not unravel the sins of his brother in Islam, while at the same time calls him to repent. The hijab is something beloved by Allah because it is a shield against the spread of evil manifested in the display of beauty to strangers. So back to the hadith now. We understand the, the name of Allah being Hayy. Now we understand the name of Allah being the Sittir. Allah and Most High is Hayy, bashful, Sittir, shields. He loves Haya, He loves bashfulness and Sitr, shielding, covering. Is the meaning of the hadith now clear to you, inshallah? This is a great hadith. Is it clear? Fine. Alhamdulillah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, إيما امرأة نزعت ثيابها في غير بيت أهلها خرق الله عز وجل عنها سترها Any woman who takes off her clothes in other than her husband's home to show off for unlawful purposes has broken Allah's shield upon her. This is collected by Abu Dawood and at Tirmidhi and he said it is a good hadith. Any woman who takes off her clothes in other than her husband's home to show off for unlawful purposes has broken Allah's shield upon her. You see, Allah is sitir. Provides means to shield. The hadith demonstrates that depending upon the kind of action committed, there will be either reward if good or punishment. The fifth virtue of hijab is the hijab is a taqwa is righteousness and piety Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-a'raf in chapter 7 26 
يا بني آدم قد أنزلنا عليكم لباسا يواري سوآتكم وريشا ولباس التقوى ذلك خير O children of Adam We have bestowed raiment upon you to cover yourselves screen your private parts etc and as an adornment but the raiment of righteousness that is better but the raiment of righteousness that is better the widespread forms of dresses in the world today are mostly for show off and hardly taken as a cover and shield of the woman's body hardly to the believing woman however the purpose is to safeguard their bodies and cover their private parts as a manifestation of the order of Allah and thus it is a taqwa in this respect righteousness and piety sixth virtue of hijab the hijab is iman is faith is belief Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not address his words about the hijab except to the believing woman al-mu'minat Just contemplate the verse when we started reading it. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And say, O Muhammad وسلم, to the believing woman. In another verse, in 33.59, وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And the believing woman. Aisha, رضي الله تعالى عنها, May Allah be pleased with her, and her father the wife of the Prophet والسلام, the mother of the believers addressed some woman from the tribe of Banu Tamim who came visiting her and they had light clothes on them she said to them if indeed you are believing woman then truly this is not the dress of the believing woman and if you are not believing woman then enjoy it Seven, light clothes, light. Seven, the hijab is bashfulness. The hijab is bashfulness, haya. The Prophet ﷺ said, إن لكل دين خلقا وخلق الإسلام الحياة. He صلى الله عليه وسلم said each religion has a morality and the morality of Islam is bashfulness. <coughs> this is related by Imam Malik in his Muatta. But the hadith chain is mursal, meaning the chain of narrators is disconnected at one point or another. For example. To say on the authority of A, on the authority of B, on the authority of C, that the Prophet ﷺ said so and so. The hadith would be mursal is if, for example, C did not hear directly from the Prophet. In the case of this hadith which I am talking about, Ibn Hibban connected the chain by two ways of narrators, both of them are weak. He صلى الله عليه وسلم also said الحياء من الإيمان والإيمان في الجنة Bashfulness is from belief and belief is in paradise and this hadith is collected by Tirmidhi who said it is good and authentic hadith and he صلى الله عليه وسلم said الحياء والإيمان قرنا جميعا فإذا رفع أحدهما رُفِعَ الآخر. Bashfulness and belief are fully associated together. If one is lifted, the other follows suit. The mother of the believers, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, I used to enter the room where the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and my father were later buried in 
without having my garment on me saying it is only my husband and my father I will repeat she, Aisha said I used to enter the room where the messenger of Allah وسلم, and my father were later buried in without having my garment on me saying it is only my husband and my father but when Umar was later buried in the same place I did not enter the room except that I had my garment on being shy from Umar. The hijab fits the natural bashfulness which is a part of the nature of women. The hijab fits the natural bashfulness which is a part of the nature of women. Number eight, the eighth virtue. The hijab is ghira. The hijab is ghira. What is this? The hijab is ghira. The hijab fits the natural feeling of ghira, which is intrinsic in the straight man who does not like people to look at his wife or daughters. Ghira is a driving emotion that drives the straight man to safeguard women who are related to him from strangers. The straight Muslim man has Ghira for all Muslim women, for all Muslim women. Many in the world have lost this great moral aspect in response to lust and desire. Men look with desire at other women while they don't mind that other men do the same to their wives or daughters. In the societies often referred to as a free, you see men sitting with strange women who are half naked, caught enjoying the scene. They even introduce their wives to other strange men. Mutual looks here and there. Affairs develop and fall cones are exchanged. Love affairs destroys many families and children suffer most. And what kind of love is this? The mixing of sexes and absence of hijab kills the ghira in men, takes it away. The eyes eat up other men and women. The inner justification is, well, since I can look, they can look. It's a free choice. Few are those who feel anything when they discover their wives have affairs. They become numb, no dignity, no honor. And they like it for themselves. The bottom line is that in many societies of this modern world, the animalistic behaviors are becoming very apparent. Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, said, quote, It was related to me that you women used to crowd the kuffar, the disbelieving men from the non-Arabs in the markets. Don't you have ghira? There is no good in the one who does not have ghira. End of quote. Islam considers ghira an integral part of faith. The dignity of the wife or daughter or any other Muslim woman must be highly respected and defended. Inshallah, in the next talk, we're going to talk about the disgrace of tabarruj, the display of woman's charm. This will be the next talk on this subject walhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam